Welcome to this week's edition of Trade the Trend. I'm Jason McIntosh. It is Friday the 1st of October 2021. Trade the Trend is a weekly video discussing the latest trends and opportunities in the market. As always, it is general advice and not specifically tailored to you. Okay, with that said, let's jump into the first chart. Well, we're going to start with the, the S&P 500. And geez, hasn't it been a fascinating couple of weeks? It's, uh, it's really developing into a, into a bit of a tussle between the, the bulls who like to come in and buy the dip and those with more bearish ideas on, on where this market's heading. So last week was a, look, last week was your classic buy the dip. So let's just zoom in on this chart a little bit. So, you know, this, this rally up through here last week, that's your, your classic buy the dip. And the market hit the 100 day moving average on the, uh, on the S&P 500. And that was, that was a prompt for this um, buy the dip to, to engage. And what, look, this, this buy the whole, this buy the dip strategy, people become so accustomed to it during a, during a bull market. Like you, know, you look at all these points through here, you know, the market coming back to the moving averages and quickly snapping back. And buy the dip works really well as the market's rising, but it can lead to trouble when the market becomes vulnerable to, 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 you know, to weakness and, and lower levels. And this is what we're seeing now. And really, I think that the failure of, the, uh, of this advance that we had to, to hold those gains and then to consolidate and move higher it really um, underscores that there is some, some underlying weakness in this market. And here we are again, we've rolled back over and we're, and we're testing these, these lows. So look, this is the um, Thursday night in the, or Thursday night Australian time, Thursday day in the US. That's, a, that's the first close we've had of the S&P 500 below its 100 day moving average since look all the way back um, back here you've got to go back to october to find another close below the 100 day moving average prior to that we're, we're back down here just in the early stages of the recovery it's back in um back in may when the market was below the 100 day moving average so look it is um it is a significant thing to be be aware of and this brings two important zones into focus so let's look at those now so we have a um, we've got a got a support zone between 42.50 and 42.20 so just drawing that in it's around about around about there and that just it just picks up picks up these are uh, the you know this low here a high there another high here there's a high there so this is probably where I think the market is um, likely to, to head over the next, maybe over the, over the next week, we could see it come back towards this support. It's quite a significant support level. And, and then if we look, look past that, the next area after that would be the 200 day moving average. So let me just change this over from a, from a 100 day to a 200 day, because this is a significant moving average, which a lot of, a lot of our players in the market keep an eye on. So there's our 200 day moving average down there. That company currently comes in around 41.30. So if we um, look so far, this is a 5% pullback, which is, look, it's nothing out of the ordinary in, a, in an overall upward trending market. I think the potential is there for this to extend towards 10%. So look, let's just put some measurements on this to get, get our bearings. So if it gets back to this support, well that takes us down to around, around about the 7% mark. The, the moving average is down around nine. You know, is there a possibility for it to get down there and overshoot? Well, I think there certainly is. So look, you'd, I, think, I think we're looking at it at the moment, we're looking at something between maybe five and 10% possibility of an overshoot to 15%. That's kind of what I'm thinking with this, this market at the moment. You know, look, it could it could stabilise around current levels, but this week close suggests that there is, you know, it does have does have more in it at this point. So let's look at the the Dow. Come over to the Dow and look. It's a similar sort of setup. So the support that I'm looking for at, in the Dow comes in around around this sort of sort of this sort of mark mark through here. So thirty three six hundred. 33,200. Let's see, 33,600. Yeah, it looks around, around about there. This is probably the, the support to keep an eye on the Dow. 
And it's interesting because it also comes in around the 200 day moving average. So There's quite a bit of support to underpin the market around here. So it's going to be going to be key to watch this week to see whether if the market gets down there, does that level start to hold? Do we see some sort of bounce or is there going to be more, more follow through selling again? So the vulnerability is definitely to the downside in this market. So uh, look, it's, it's time to keep a close eye on, on how it develops over the next few days. The Russell 2000, so this is a, the, the smaller cap segment of the US market. We've been watching this this big trading range really for, um, for much of this year. It stretches back into back into February. Marcus just been stuck in the mud in this big range. What's been interesting over the over the last few months is it's now starting to coil into an even smaller range, so a range within the range. So if we draw that trend line there and we can do another one through here. Let's get rid of that larger range. So it's 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 coiling within a, a larger range. So the hope has always been that this this market would break to the ultimately break to the top side that would get a you know get a move out of out of here and head higher. But look, we've got to entertain the possibility that that's not going to happen and that maybe the break will come to the the downside. That would be that'd be quite quite negative overall for the market because then it would leave this big topping pattern in, in place. So look, it's too early to call this at the moment because it is still range bound, but it's just, just things we're watching, things to keep an eye on, things to be aware of. And we want to watch this closely and see how it develops to give us clues to what the overall market may do and whether there's a potential for the current pullback to turn into something larger. Not my base case at the moment, but you've always got to have an open mind as to what, what could happen. So jumping to the NASDAQ, NASDAQ's been been you know quite weak compared to the S and P five hundred and uh, and the Dow. Like it's it's broken down below this low from from uh, a couple of weeks ago. Closed on its lows. It's look. It is kind of leading the way down. I think the um, support zone for for this quite a quite a good support zone comes in here. So the support there is around say. 14,240 to 14,140, kind of looking in there. And uh, look, that's around, I think that's probably around 7%, would it be? Let's have a quick, quick look. What's that? 7.5%, almost 8% down from the high. Look, I think the odds are we're gonna, we're gonna test that. If it got through that, then you're looking at the moving average. Moving average is currently coming in around, um, what's that, 13,800. If it got down there, that is, well, there's a, that 10% again. So look, there, there is that prospect that we do come down to the moving 200-day av moving average. Look, the 200-day moving average in itself, if the market were to come down and touch that, that's not you know, an overly big, scale, big deal in the scheme of things. In a broad bull market, you'll often find the 200-day moving average touched every, maybe once every, every year or two. We haven't been down there for a while, so, this could all still well and truly be within the bounds of a, a pullback within a within a broader broader upward trend. And it's interesting, just, just having a look at some of the Fibonacci levels while we're here. So you, you may know that I like looking at the Fibonacci levels to so just give us a good guide as to where markets could pull back from. from. We just measure this, this move up. You can see the 50% retracement is right within this support support zone here. So look, it's going to be interesting whether we can get a bounce off that, whether it holds. The 61.8% is down near the 200 day moving average. So yeah, this could we could get some sort of base forming around here. Too early to say, we need to let some more price action develop. Just on these, these Fibonacci's, they're, they're, they're real, they're, they are interesting, but they are, they're quite discretionary in how you apply them. It, a lot depends on where you anchor the starting point. So like if we were to use this point here, you get a completely different set of levels. So I've used this point because my reasoning is that this here is like, this is all part of a, um, a, you know, a zigzaggy type consolidation. So I've used the starting point of the, the next leg of the advance. So I'm calling this a starting point of the advance, not this here. 
But, you know, I, I see people drawing Fibonacci's off all sorts of things. You know, some people will use, you know, this point here, and then they're projecting, well, look, if it comes back 50%, we're down here. And it can really throw you off. So if you, you, you're interested in this sort of thing, you've got to spend some time sort of studying where you use your starting point because it makes all the difference. Um, I don't use this in my system trading. It's too, disc too discretionary. It's a bit interesting, but for my actual trading decisions, I'm not basing them off... Um, of fib levels. Okay, so look, with, with that said, sounds you know, a little bit on the on the negative side, but I want, to, I want to give you a positive on this at the moment. So one of the things which makes me optimistic optimistic that this isn't the start of something bigger is that some stocks and sectors are actually looking quite good on the charts. So for example, the uh, financial stocks in the US. Now let's just get a chart of that. It's an ETF. XLF, US Financial Sector ETF. And what's interesting here is that this market, and it's quite similar to the, to the Australian financial sector, this market is actually quite close to its 52-week highs. So it looks very different to the S&P 500 and, and, and the NASDAQ. And if we were heading into a larger bear market, I'd expect that the financials would be really breaking down as well. Uh, and that's what we saw during the start of the GFC. The financials led the way. The financials were weaker than the S&P 500. So when the financials are strong, it suggests to me that the underlying economy is strong. So that's why I don't think this is the start of something really big and bad. It's, uh, we'll keep watching this for clues, but at the moment, I think this is looking, look, this looks, this looks solid. And, uh, and then I look at some of the, I'm going to show you, show, show you some stock examples in a, in a moment in the, uh, in the local market, which are, which are looking strong and which are showing signs of, of breaking up. And again, they're going to give us some clues as to you know, what, what could be happening later on. And look, by the way, if, you, if you're getting some value from this, biz, from this video, please hit that like button just, just below because it tells YouTube that the videos are, are worth showing. So then YouTube shows them and more people watch them which means I keep making them. So please hit that like button if you're getting some value. All right, local market time. Let's jump over to the All Ordinaries. Now, All Ordinaries, it's been, look, it's um, the big thing which we've been watching here is this support, support zone. So let's just draw that in first. So the support here is what is it where did i support it's some um, 7480 to 7420 and it's been a real battle line a real battle line over the last over the last couple of weeks so we had the you know the big buy the dip rally and and this was interesting because i was telling you about my hedging last week so a couple of weeks ago i put some hedging on i think i put my hedging on here had the had the big fall and I was talking last week going, look, I resisted the urge to take the hedges off and take a quick profit on it because the idea of hedging is to protect the portfolio in case something, you know, something, if this keeps unwinding, I want some protection there rather than try and snare a quick profit. Strong rally last week. And look, on this particular day, where is it? Just here. So let me just blow that up a little bit. Yeah, I think that was, I think that might have been... Um, when was it? I've forgotten what day it was now. It might have been about Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday last week. I thought of actually thought of taking the um, taking the hedge off. And I was watching it through the day, and the, my thoughts were: Look, if the market closes strong. I'll I'll cover it near the close. If it starts to weaken near the close, I'll I'll hang on to it. And sure enough, it started to weaken on the close and closed down below the 50-day moving average. So I kept the hedge on. And I'm glad I did because the market's fallen and I've, I've, you know, I've still got the hedge. Uh, rallied strongly on Thursday, but there was no need to take the hedge off on that because there's just so much resistance above the market. It was still worth, worth holding on. And now we're down again today and we're right on that support. So look, I think, um, I think, I think the odds favour. We, look, we may get some sort of bounce off there because it looks quite oversold today heading into that support. It might need a bit of a... You know, bit of a bit of a, a run up the break through it, but um, by that I mean sort of make maybe a, a sideways day and then and then down. Uh, but look, just just based on what I'm seeing in the US, I think odds favour that we're going to break this support, and then that would bring in the focus of 200 moving day average, which is currently around 41.30 just here. So it's not far below that support, but that's where we then look at next. 
and that's around 7%. The next support after that is down around 7,200. I haven't put that on the chart so as not to clutter it too much, but look, I'll just quickly put it, put it in. The next support is around, around about there, around about that 7,200, picks up these lows through here, picks up that high, that high there as well. So that's about, I think that's about 9%. Look, yeah, look, that's about a 9% move if we were to, were to get down there. So look, these are the, you know, these are the points to watch in the, in the market. Um, I think, yeah, look, I think lower levels are looking, looking likely at the, uh, at the moment, the way things stand, the current price action would suggest some, some lower levels. So, Look, with that, that said, I thought it was, um, look, I think it'd be interesting just to look at a few few local stocks which which don't have this profile, just to show, just put some balance to this, that it's not all doom and gloom. And if it was all doom and gloom, I'd be expecting pretty much everything to be looking pretty ordinary, but that's not the case. So there's, there's a real theme developing in, in, in some of, the, some of the, the, the signals which I'm seeing develop. Um, so look, let's look at this first one. It's a company called Vista Group. It's New Zealand based. They're involved in, in um, cinema technology, cinema management technology. Really interesting business. And so let's have a look at this. Okay, there's a COVID crash there. So COVID was a disaster for cinemas as we, as we all know. But what's, what's interesting, so let me just draw the basing pattern first. So firstly, it, it formed this big basing pattern over, over, over um, how many months? Like maybe over about six months. So this was the first interesting point. We had the breakout breakout here from from this little pattern. Um, I'm actually going to change this moving average back over to a, to a 100 day because that's what I use when I'm looking for stocks. I'm using a 100 day moving average, not a 200. A little bit more responsive. So yeah, so you can see where the moving averages cross here just after they've broken out of this out of this basing pattern. So it's always nice when you can see you know moving averages and a basing pattern working together. This little circle here, that's where I got an entry signal. So just on my motion trader service which I operated, that's where, where I sent the signal out putting this as a buy. And uh, oh look just by the way if you're interested in how I how I do analyze stocks you'll find a link to a free training series in the description below the uh, below the video. And in the in that series, I just talk about like how I buy, how I buy stocks, the entry signals I use, the the exit strategy, risk management, all that sort of thing. So if you're interested in that, check out the link to the video series below this. But back to back to this chart. So that was that was the entry point, and then we had, then we've got another formation here, and it's another one of these contracting trading ranges that we call a triangle. Really interesting and really reliable patterns as well. Uh, so look, we got another breakout in August. We've gone sideways, bit up, had a return move quite common. And in the last few weeks, we've been rallying again. And here we are today. We're only just a little bit below a 52-week high. So here's my point about not everything in the market is looking bad. So that's why I don't think that this is a big bear market developing. I think it's a pullback within a bull market. And so I'm seeing these positive signs and these uh, reopening style trades. So this is the first one. Interesting stock. Well, I've had buy signals on that recently. Might be interesting to see what it does here over the next few days with this volatility, whether, whether it can stabilize here and then break higher again. And that would be, it'd be, an, be an interesting entry point for someone looking at a stock like that. Uh, another one I want to quickly show you is a company called Viva, Viva Leisure. It's a gym operator. Now this has had a lot of, got a lot of gyms, been growing really quickly, and it's um, like you know all the stocks in this this COVID related thing. Terrible um, period for it during COVID. You know all the gyms shut down and the like. Uh, so let's just draw in this downward trend channel. It's broken up from that, which is positive. Then we've got, we've got, um, well, let me see, there's a resistance band, resistance band between around, that looks about it there. So I've got this overhead resistance through here, you can see these lows it picks up, and then you've got the high there, so some work is done through there, another pick up there, you can probably carry it across to here as well. And it's just bumping up against it now. 
The moving averages haven't crossed yet, but they're turning. They look like they're going to cross pretty soon. So I haven't got a buy signal on this one yet, but it's it's one of the sort of things which I'm, I look at. They're on it's on the radar. It's had a strong move up. It's consolidating. It's really holding in well during this market volatility. So again, it suggests that maybe there's a trend change happening, and maybe there's an opportunity developing here where where look if this continues to go sideways for I don't know maybe a week or two, and then we start to get a break above this level here up into this this zone could be a sign that this, this is a stock which is ready to go as well. So just got a couple more to quickly run over. So this one here, Charter Hall Retail. So this is shopping centres. So you can really see this theme developing. We've got cinemas, gyms, shopping centres. Um, yeah, bottom fell out of this during COVID because no one was going to shopping centres. And we've got this... Um, got this big sort of range which has been forming since October last year and within that range we've got another range and this is the one which I'm which I'm most interested in so we've got one of these contracting trading ranges the triangle which which I like like so much probably draw it in there so we're just attempting to break out of this this pattern now and this is really interesting like here's Friday's action. Now this is a day the market is down. The market's currently down 1.8%, 1.9%. This stock opened, it's traded lower, and now it's trading above it's opened, and it's only down slightly for the day. That is that is really positive price action. It shows there's support below the market for this stock. There's, it's, uh, the, the market is resistant to, to it selling off. Um, I think that this is on the verge of really having a good breakout. For me, if it broke above this high here from Thursday, let's just put a little line there. Look, a break above there, that'd be enough for me to say, I think this is on the on the move. And you can do a measured move out of these out of these ranges. Mm -hmm. So you measure the the width of the range, and then you can project it up from the breakout, and it gets you up around there, up to around where's that? 435 thereabouts as a as a like this is like a you know it, it's a target but I don't I don't use targets for my trading but it's interesting nonetheless. Let me just measure this. What is that? That is that's about 10%. So you've got a potentially a 10% move there, pays five and a half percent in dividends. So and my my style would be if this started to break up and if it got up to there. The trend's presumably still up, so you let it run, and you just don't know how far these things can run. You know, this could well and truly run. You know, maybe it grows back and you know, heads back to its old highs. We don't know. That's that's why you let your profits run because you don't know how far they can run. And this is shaping up as a good risk reward trade. Um, yeah, look, this little point here. This is where where I got my motion trader members in. You can see the moving averages cross, broke to a 70-day high, so it cleared all these levels here. So that met the criteria. And we've been collecting this five and a half percent dividend through here while it's you know while it's um, gathering steam, hopefully for the for the next leg higher. So we'll wrap up with one more. Webjet. So again, you can see the theme. We're on to travel now. Same sort of thing. It's really giving interesting clues to what's going on in the broader market. So what I've been watching in Webjet is this resistance band through here. Actually, let's let's bring that down a touch. So we get, so we've got that high there as our top, and we've got this high here as our base. Collects this point through here, and it's um, look, it's been in this big range. So again, it's been been in this holding pattern, been in this holding pattern through here, much like the um, the uh, CQR, the the, the shopping centres. Been in that holding pattern for a while. Same sort of thing we saw also in Investor Group. And we're now just breaking up above it. Look at the price action today. Same as with the shopping centres. Market's down almost 2%. This is actually up. It's higher than yesterday's close. Sign of real relative strength. There's some, I think there's something going, going on with this, this whole theme in general around you know, these reopening type trades. They're gathering momentum at a time when the All Ordinaries is coming off which makes me think the all ordinaries move. Again, I don't think it's the start of an overall bear market. I couldn't be entirely wrong, but the evidence I'm seeing at the moment doesn't support that. Uh, look, 
interesting stock to watch. Moving averages across there. You can see the little, little dot. That's where I got my members in recently. Um, yeah, look, interesting things. I'm seeing a lot more stocks like this as well. You know, you know these smaller stocks, players in the travel um, travel industry, other other stocks like you know like like Vista and uh, and Viva. So it's interesting times. So look, this is one of those difficult periods in the markets. I continue to think that it's a pullback, not a start of a bear market, but look, we've just got to be guided by the price action. I think it's a time for following the trading plan that you put in place when the markets were calm and you had rational thought and clear thought about what you wanted to do. And I think it's all about knowing where your exit levels are in case things continue to unravel or the stocks you have are caught up in the unraveling. And lastly, I think it's a time for keeping a cool head. So with that said, let's call that a wrap for this week. Hope you got something out of it. Please hit that like button if you haven't already, if you got something good. And I look forward to coming back and we'll try and put all the pieces back together again next week. Thank you for listening.